Okay, so, um, well, Jeremy, it's really good to, uh, to be talking to you and uh, thank you for joining me for this book conversation. Now, you've given me uh, three books that uh, have meant something to you in the past. And the first one I'd like to ask you about is this one. Um, in fact, it's a, it's, there are three books in one cover, but uh, All Passion Spent is one that I know you've identified as being one that's very special to you. So tell me, why was that one special? Well, I just find it interesting that we had read before by Rebecca West, The Return of the Soldier. And um, I saw it and I realised that she'd put a trilogy. I thought I'd like to read the other ones in that trilogy to hear what it's about. And it's, it's written about 40 or 50 years ago, I think, and which is it's a completely different style of writing. Mm. I just found it fascinating the way in which... Um, Vita Sacra West could communicate real family issues that I think most people experience in a, and put it into a novel like this. I mean, the, the way it's a sort of, uh, I felt, about women expressing themselves and um, from oppression or being subject to not really in family lives not be able to live for themselves so much. Mm. And, and they were right at a time when women weren't very popular or shall I say, you know, didn't have a big part in society. Well, that's right. And so in a sense, I think it's, it's telling us it's a story, it's partly autobiographical, of autobiography of her life. I mean, the woman was just there to serve, to support her husband, to bring up the children. And um, there was not really much thought about them as individuals and what they wanted for themselves mm. um, in those days then. So she put this story together, which is, I think it's quite good to hear and think about from a different perspective, what's going on and what, I mean, especially as men, what women think about and where their values are sort of thing yeah. a bit more. Yeah. Interesting. Things have changed a bit, but maybe it's still like that a bit. Yes, and I, I can see what you mean by being well written because um, uh, I've, the little bits that I've read have drawn me in in a way that I wasn't expecting. You know, the, the huge uh, emphasis upon character description um, yes. you know, is, is fascinating, isn't it? Well, it's a lovely book in that respect because it is not like the novel we pick up now where he's going to flick through it, but she takes time to describe it the characters and make them very real mm. and so you can relate to it and yet because of that she also takes things very slowly so yeah. it's not a, a quick read um where you're going to flick through it and you just you can get involved in it that, and in the story which is what you really you want in a, in a book to make things real and bring it alive and yet is full of surprises. But how, how come you uh, enjoyed it? And why did you pick it up when it's clearly a, a book by a woman for addressed to women? I, I thought I'd read the other book, The Return of the Soldier. And this, the culture was so different in those times that you didn't have to have someone who's very good and someone who's a big baddie and enemy. And, you know, they put, they work out things together and all running off the rails. But it's just about the general way of life that's described there really for individuals who are seeking the best mm. and the, those, the things that they we all struggle with really depicted in that way. So it's nice reading and it's something different there. Do you think she was a woman uh, ahead of her time? I think in a sense, yes, but it's also because Women are, you can't say that ahead of their time, the issues are the same, but she's expressing it in a way that is very difficult. Mm. And, um, and in that respect, it's, it's a good read. Interesting. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I've learned something simply by looking at it uh, in, in the last few days, uh, reading little parts of it and uh, finding out about um, Vita Sackville West, who, of course, we, we ought to know much better because her life was, was centred around Knoll, which is only 10 miles away, really. Anyway, look, I'm going to move straight on to your second book, uh, Jeremy, which uh, you, you, you um, uh, let me have a look at. Now, this is a book that I remember Trevor Mapstone uh, recommended on more than one occasion from the pulpit because it had impressed him. So, 
in what ways has, has it impressed you? Well, I'll tell you why I got it. I got it from a Christian bookshop in in London, near where I'm Incidentally, I haven't said the title. It's Jesus, no, it's Jesus, Jesus through, through, through the Eastern Eyes. And the, it just drew my attention when I was there. It was, it's further, it's not, I can't remember the name of the bookshop anyway, but um, because there was an organisation supporting um, the Middle East outreach, and which I knew about. Yes. And they sent me some short pamphlets describing the parables in the light of Middle Eastern culture. Mm. Now, I got many copies of them and they all gave them away, but, because, but it brought the parables alive. And so when I saw this, I thought, yes, I'd like to get that and yeah. find out what he's got to say. He yeah. barely had lived for over 40 years in the Middle East and he appreciated their culture and what's going on. And to really understand, I'm not saying you can't understand it without having lived it 40 years in the Middle East, but um, it brings it to life a, a bit mm. more. Mm. And so, I mean, it's a book that you're going to, you just dip, it, dip in and out of, I think, because it's, it's very detailed. And um, it's a wonderful novel, wonderful book. Yes. That I've thoroughly enjoyed. Well, I mean, when you say you dip into it here and there, I mean, there's a whole section on Jesus and women. And I, I seem to remember Trevor saying how, you know, our understanding of the relationship between men and women is so coloured by living in the 21st century. But, but living in, in, in um, Palestine in the first century, uh, people had a very different view, didn't they? Yes, that's right. I'm absolutely right. They, they wouldn't be seen in general, have conversation with the women so much. And, and yet I think he opened up. I, haven't, I can't recall anything specifically from that, that area, but um, the, it, the, it takes you all the way through different ways of relationships and life and things there. Mm. Yeah. And the, the, there are sections on, on the parables as well. Is, is there one particular episode that, 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 you, um, that you did benefit from when you read this? Well, the, the wise and the foolish builders, you see, it's about building there. And that's fascinating because you, you, we don't understand about the, the concept of building the wise builder, taking the foundations right down to the rock. Well, you just get the digger out, don't you? And just scoop it out and you're down there, aren't you? And the foolish one who didn't, just didn't have any foundations. So we have no understanding of what the issues were involved, but the Israelites there would have known. Because, I mean, I made some notes here, building foundations in Israel was hard work. They couldn't just get the digger along. The clay was hard, and they only had a few months in the summer when they could do any excavation or do building work because of the rains. Um, so they, um, and the bedrock was often deep. But if you spoke with anyone there, they say, where do you need to cast the foundations? They say, on the rock. Yeah, yeah. But, of course, they're limited to the time and expense and other things. So to get the foundations down onto the rock, they had to plan it mm. and take time and effort to do that. Mm. It wasn't straightforward. It was a big undertaking. Um, and took a lot of effort, well, those things going into it. Whilst anyone there would have known about the builders that didn't do easier and cheaper option with those builders who just didn't cut, bother with the foundations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, you're, you're right. I mean, it, it, to have somebody talking about this who really understands the Middle East um, is valuable because so many, you know, <laughs> Uh, Sunday school teachers and people who preach from the 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 the, um, the, the, the pulpit, um, they give the same kind of explanation. It's all quite bland. It's all very sort of second hand. But to have a first hand understanding of these uh, of the background and the context for these um, Bible episodes is really valuable, isn't it? Yes, but there is another one which I'd learned from before. Now I might be incorrect because I couldn't find it exactly in in that book. But this was about the great banquet. Oh, yes. That feast had been planned for months and they'd given the invitation. Now, in that, what I learned from, from the book that I was given before, mm. 
he was that the person, the, the, the host, would welcome people with the words, welcome, and again, welcome. My house is your house. And that just brings to me alive the invitation, all that I have, I share with you. Mm. And the invitation that God gives to us to come to him. And yet you have in that banquet, in that parable then, the people actually insulting the host. Mm. Saying, no, I've got, my business is more important. That I, they've already accepted, yeah. but now I'm insulting, making, excuses. making ri ridiculous excuses. Yeah, yeah because they're too busy and they're too interested in their own things yeah and yet that, that invitation that really we can see the host or god giving all that i have i give to you mm. and i find that incredible I'm, I'll, I'll definitely read that one before i give it back to you anyway i mean strong recommendation there for this book which which i i i'll probably buy my own copy because it looks really good thank you jeremy now your third book that you uh, that you recommended to me wind in the willows this is a children's book isn't it jeremy it's named or called as a children's book but the writing is wonderful and the i mean the, even they've got a quiz if you think you're children they've got a quiz or that goes with it on the on the nature and the wild uh, wildlife that they just see described through the book yeah to see how much understanding okay ah yes i saw that. They have on that yes because yeah. um it's beautiful writing. Mm. Um, it's got Brit lovely British humour in it. Yes. Um, as I say, vivid description of the countryside that mixed with really exciting adventures. Yes, yes. And what takes my passion is they're going places and doing, and a river. I mean, I love getting out and if I can. Yes. In a river. Yes. It's okay. interesting, isn't it? I think, you know, I've, I've um, uh, read this book years and years ago and uh, I've seen the, the stage play and so on. You, you, you do sort of forget that the characters are actually animals because the animals yes. have been so humanised. They've been given such a human identity and character that, in fact, they're, they're much more like humans than they are like animals, aren't they? Well, that's fascinating you say that because that's what I was thinking. We can see the human characteristics in each one of us, in those characters, those animals. And that's what's interesting there, that it, our frailties and even what the strength in, in relationships yeah, yeah. comes through so clearly from, from this. Mm. Possibly, especially at this time of lockdown, we can see how important that is as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's actually just a beautiful book and I think I'm gonna read it again now. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, it, it, uh, I remember my primary school teacher reading it to us as a class and, and it meant something then, you know, we could all relate to it because it's a story about animals. But as, a, as an adult, um, you know, reading it again probably um, uh, gives us a different slant on it. Yes, and, and as you say, you can see yourself in that, in the characters there and the animals there. Yeah, very interesting. So would you recommend that other people read it again? I... If, the thing is, you want something, what do you want for reading? I mean, we don't want all this intellectual stuff and we want to be able to relax and have a laugh and a bit of fun and possibly learn a few lessons, but it's to be able to share. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, a bit of light reading uh, just keeps everything in balance. Yes, you could, I, and I think that's right. Yes, I mean, mm. since in those books that I've just described there, there is quite a bit of balance in the different... Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I agree with you. Well, Jeremy, it's fantastic, fantastic. You are sitting in front of a bookshelf there, uh, just like loads of the people who I see on television being interviewed on, on, on the news and so on. Everybody uh, has got uh, a life in their bookshelves, their, their interests, their character and so on is shaped by what's in their bookshelf. So I'm- And, uh, and we fit in a lot of artwork by my wife as well there. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So thank you for sharing these three books. Uh, I'm sure other people will be interested to see them as well. And um, thank you for the, uh, for, thank you for talking to me.